I've caught Ripley in a lie, and he knows it. I've got a son, knowing that we're onto his dad. And Ripley's wife? What about her? Well, have you worked out what she's hiding? This cop is trying to say I had a fight with the bloke who died, and I don't know if I did or not. Which cop is saying this? So Mike Hooley's body was moved from your flat to your arcade by someone who had keys to both. Did you have anything to do with beating Steve up? No, I didn't. But I wish I bloody well had. He got out of it on cider and laid out on the railway line. I'd know if he was the type to try and kill himself. Why are you behaving like this? My daughter, for God's sake. Not now, I'm not. I killed Mike Hooley. I sold him drugs. I beat him up. I killed him. That's what my mama told me when I was about me high. She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high. Walk tall, walk straight and make the world right in the eye. All through the years that I grew up, Ma taught these things to me. But I was young and foolish then and much too blind to see. I ignored the things she said as if I'd never heard. Now I see and understand the wisdom of her words. Walk tall, walk straight, and make the world right in the eye. That's what my mama told me when I was about knee high. She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high. Walk tall, walk straight, and make the world right in the eye. I started going places where the youngsters shouldn't go. I got to know the kind of girls it's better not to know. I fell in with a bad crowd and laughed and drank with them. Through the laughter, mama's words would echo now and then. Walk tall, walk straight and make the world right in the eye. That's what my mama told me when I was about knee high. She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high. Walk tall, walk straight, and make the world right in the eye. You lying two-faced bastard, you are full of shit. You're poison. Poison. Yeah. Get out! So what was the idea, eh? Screw me so you could screw my son. I haven't screwed your son. His confession doesn't even tally with the victim's injuries. Oh, well, hardly worth screwing me at all, then, eh? When I came to see you, it was part of the investigation. But that stopped from the moment we first talked. We lay in each other's arms in that hotel room and you asked me about my family. About my son. Because I was curious about your life, like any lover would No, be. you are not my lover! You were just some seedy copper who fancied me. You know, you were dead on when you said that people always went for the same type because Ripley is a lying bastard too. I didn't want it to end. What else could I do? I had to lie about who I was. Right, well, so, so you were lying before you fell for me and you were lying after. Was there ever a time you weren't lying? Wait. Oh, I see. You're leaving you as my wife to get at me, wouldn't you? You're out of order, D.I. Carlisle. I was just assuring Mrs. Holden that Danny isn't in trouble. Well, perhaps not as much trouble as he wanted to be. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Hey, Danny came to me. If I wanted to arrest him, I could have done it last week when I picked him up for supplying speed. The boy is clearly very confused. Yeah, well, he's not the only one, Danny's is he? Danny's doing drugs. Come on, love, let's get our son on. You just leave my family alone. Oh, sorry, but I might be in the thick body. I mean, I was confessing to a murder you didn't do helping exactly. I think they're coming after you, Dad. You're coming after me, the posse. Indian tracker and a bounty hunter. They think you killed Mike Hooley. That Carlisle bloke, did he actually say that? Not exactly. A minor dope charge for a minor dope. Dad, 
did it because he was trying to protect his dad. What's so bad about that? He's going around confessing to crimes he didn't do and I didn't do. He's a bloody liability. That's your son you're talking about. He could have been charged. Carlisle wouldn't have charged him. Oh, Carlisle wouldn't, would he? You know all about him, do you? Who are you bullying now? I don't bully anybody. Tell that to Steve. What, did he tell you I beat him up? He doesn't have to. Did he tell you I beat him up? No! He doesn't have to, does he? Look at you. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Ripley, for God's sake. Look at me, why not, eh? Look at me. What do you see here, eh? What's my name? Mr. Pony and Stabling? Mr. Ballet Lessons? Bathroom Suite and Girly Pink? Mr. Rower Machine that you hang your clothes off? Hey, home cinema with multi-channel playback. Mr. Reno, like the froggy footballer drives, is that my name? I didn't realise you were totting it all up. I'll get Steve to pay you when I leave home. Why, you... <laughs> Thank you, lucky stars, that I'm a modern parent. You don't just walk in off the street and confess unless you feel guilty. Danny Holton's confession must still mean something. I think it means anything. So do you think the Holton family are innocent? Maybe he's innocent. Are you sure you want? Go and see if you can win that diver's watch and the grabber. Two times in my life, I've been happy, really happy. Once in Glasgow, 1989 at some festival in the park. Summer's evening. This singer came on. It sounded exactly like Aretha Franklin with a Scottish accent. If Proust had drunk McEwen's, he'd have written about moments like that. Any other time? the other night when we made love. Even though you knew you were lying to me? Yeah, even then. What about you? I don't know, it was... like when someone turns on the lights and you realise you've been sat in the dark for hours. That is exactly how I feel. Good. Then it might give you some idea of what you're putting me through. It hurts. And you think I want to just smile and put this down to experience? But you knew everything and I only had half the story, so how will I ever know if you were for real? Well, just give me a chance to make it right. I'm already making it right. With my family. You made me realise that's where I should be looking for happiness, not from some sneaky affair in a hotel bedroom with a man who tells ten lies before breakfast, so in a way, in the end, you did do me a favour. I need you. I need you and you need me. We'll get over it. Got your donut. Pink icing. Hundreds and thousands. I want to check the CCTV footage. I've written it all up. No, you're not listening. I want to check the CCTV footage. I want to interview Mike Hooley's fiance. I want to re-interview his mates. I want to read all the forensics reports again. I want a search warrant for Ripley Holden's house. And I want to find the taxi driver that took Ripley Holden home on the night of the arcade opening. Right, so what's the... Um... We are going to assess motive, means and opportunity. And to use the American vernacular, we are going to nail Ripley Holden's sorry ass. <laughs> There's nothing so bad that Scar can't make better. 
absolutely. How are you feeling? On the mend, I think. So what happened? Bastard jumped me from behind. Oh, well, you know, I'd never do a thing like that, don't you? I think I do, yeah. That's right. Because I like a man to see my face when I'm hitting him. It was the shock more than anything. It wasn't just a punch, he hit me with something. And he had me off balance. I think I got one clean right hook to his mouth. Steve, do yourself a favour. Don't make out like it was Ali and Frazier. Talk like a fighter when you're not. You end up looking like a limp dick in a condom. So, did he kick you or what? Why do you need to hear this? I need the details so I can go out and find the loser that did it. Until I do, Cheyenne's blaming me. Well, for a moment, I thought you were concerned about me. I am concerned about you. Look. What's this? Compensation. What for? My injuries? There's enough there for you to go and start up somewhere else. Why would I do that? It's what you do when you're giving up the woman you love. I wasn't aware that I was. You know, one day, Cheyenne will look at you and she'll see a dried up orange at the bottom of a fruit bowl. So why wait? This way you come out ahead, financial wise. <laughs> so you're trying to buy me off? Clearly you didn't get the message last time we spoke. So I thought this would make you more cooperative. May I remind you that although the corpse incident was unfortunate, we are a family entertainment centre with years of respectable trade. We have always been ahead of our time. We were one of the first arcades on the far coast to have carpet down. Go on, keep going, you can do this. Our new casino hotel will have wheelchair access to all machines to allow the disabled of all shapes and sizes to enjoy the full range of our facility. This is crap, isn't it? No, no. No, I just think you've just got to relax more. Try and be yourself. Being myself that lost the plan of permission in the first place. The Enterprise Committee wouldn't be coming down to see you if they weren't taking your appeal seriously, would they? Mm -hmm. You've got to remember who you are and what you've achieved. That's right. I'm Ripley Holden. I'm a show when I can persuade anyone if I put my mind to it. <laughs> I can charm the bollocks of a donkey. And then sell them back to him. <laughs> I should start breaking windows more often. To a fresh start. A fresh start. Mm. <laughs> Jim got that Lover's Guide video from a cow boot sale. I could borrow it if you like. Yeah, right, yeah, I look forward to that. Mm. Ripley, you're going to be late at 7.30. Hey, put the champagne on ice. I'll be back tonight with a song in my heart and a 40 foot hard on. Well, uh, I look forward to the song. <laughs> <laughs> When you came in to talk to us last time, you seemed to suggest that Mike Cooley was a bit of a lad. How do you mean? Probably in that. Not just that. Well, he's dead now, and he saw story over. He liked a night out, didn't he? Who doesn't? Would he ever get into any sort of trouble on his night out? He could look after himself. We didn't go looking. Did he like the arcades? Or was that just something that he did here? No, he was keen on the slots. He was banging on about a system. A system? Yeah, where he could win. Man against machine. He's big and all that. So it'd be fair to say that he wasn't over fond of arcade owners? I don't know about that. Just wanted to win a few bob. Is that what you and him were fighting about? Him causing trouble in the arcade? We were pissed. You know how it is. 
Was it about him causing trouble with this man? About his fiancée, Emma. What about her? Well, he used to beat her up. We all know he did it, but he just come up with some crap excuse or other. So I just wanted to have a word, sort him out before the wedding. That's that's what the rock was about. business plan we talked about. I have. It's a tissue of lies and bogus statistics. Well, that's just the kind I like. Well, just as long as they don't look at it too closely. Isn't that what you said to that hooker I laid on for you the other night? Have you seen your mother anywhere, love? I need to speak to her. The mother? Bloody hell, that's not you, is it, Ruth? Hey, you scrub up nicely, don't you? Hey, I'll give you one myself if they hadn't changed my ways. Oh, Barry. No. If any kids stray to the over-18 section, shoot to kill, all right? Not now, Barry. Look, just keep nodding and look like you're enjoying your work. Here. Yeah. Have this one on me, my friend. Here you go. Ripley, I need to talk to you about this plan to remortgage the arcade. It's not looking great. Doesn't matter. We're going to win this appeal, get the plan and permission and put the casino hotel back on track. Well, uh, confidence is commendable, but you've got to realise that if we fail... Hey, there is no such word today. This is where we turn this thing around. Oh. Yeah. Gentlemen, welcome to our family entertainment centre. This way. And this is Ripley Holden's Casino Hotel. I'm gonna do all the things for you a girl wants a man to do. Oh, baby, I'll sacrifice for you. I'll even do wrong for you. Oh, baby, every minute, every hour, I'm gonna shower you with love and affection. Look at us coming. Trick in the book, I'll try my best to get you hooked. Hey, baby, I'm yours. Each and every step I make brings me closer, baby, closer to you. And with each beat of my heart, for every day we are part, I'll hunger for every wasted hour.
Yes, yes I, I will. will. Well, then that went quite well, don't you? They said no. Well, it's like women, isn't it? They have to say no a couple of times for appearances' sake. Oh, talking of women, here comes Mary, Queen of Scots. How's business? Wouldn't be better. All I need now is for you to fall off the end of the pier. Believe me, I don't want to stay here any longer than I have to. Well, I thought you were staying in that swanky hotel on the front. What have you got to complain about? Doesn't make Blackpool any more palatable. Yeah, well, someone like you would never understand Blackpool. Oh, where a schoolboy can sell you drugs and you end up dead if you overstep the mark. Ah, oh, come on, that could happen anywhere. Everybody knows this country's gone soft on criminals. We've tracked down the taxi driver that picked you up from Kerry Corlett's at 3.30 a.m. on the night Mike Hooley died. Says he didn't take you straight home. So? Says he dropped you outside here at 3.45. Well, I fancied standing outside my arcade and admiring it. Something you wouldn't understand, not being a businessman. Is that when you saw Mike Hooley again? I'm not going to fall for that one. Oh, and Carlisle. Give Jim Albright my love next time you have one of your little chats. You are here all the time? More or less. Overnight? No, I go home around midnight, back on 5, 5.30 in the morning. But nobody's to know that, right? How do you mean? Well, I mean, as far as most people are concerned, you're here 24 hours. Mike Hooley's fiance can't hang around. Nice so. talking to you. What's this? We realise this is difficult, but... Why were you going to marry Mike? Why do you think? Why does anybody marry someone? Question I ask myself on a daily basis. Did you love him? Yeah, I loved him. And what did you love about him? You know, he enjoyed life. Liked to drink. Bit of a gamble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Buckets, fruit machines, you name it. And he didn't mind a fight, I hear. He was just a normal lad. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not. Saying he was a troublemaker, but... If he kept getting threatened, maybe, throughout the course of an evening, would he walk away or would he perhaps stand his ground? Well, he did have a bit of a temper. Even with you? Well, what do you mean? Well, did you and him ever have any fights? Well, couples have fights. And did they ever get violent? No. Who's been telling you that? You finish your coffee? Yeah, why? <laughs> what was he doing at a place like this? He was visiting a prostitute. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. Why did you have to bring me here? Why are you doing this? <laughs> so, Emma, did Mike used to hit you? You look like the cat who got the cream. Maybe I did. Is it a secret? Yeah, it's a secret. OK. Well, don't you want to know what it is? Aren't you just a little bit curious? Well, of course I am. 
Martha, I'm not going to chase you around asking. I'm going to drive you mad by pretending I don't care. OK, I can play that game. Well, it's made you happy. That's the main thing. Yeah, it made me happy. Good. Do you want to know what it is yet? Well, why don't you tell me? And you'll be pleased for me, because it makes me happy. Yes. And you promise not to tell Dad? OK, I promise. Steve asked me to marry him. Oh, right. Well, what did you say? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> well, I... I just said you'd be pleased for me. You can't even do that, can you? You can't even pretend. Cheyenne, Shy come on, look, don't, don't be silly. I was just surprised, that's all. I thought you were on my side. I am on your side. It's just marriage. It's a big step, isn't it? Who's getting married? I am. Who too? I got married when I was your age. So? Well, I thought that was one of the things that irritated you about me. Married young, stayed at home. You're not that unhappy. Oh, you have no idea. You're just saying this to spoil everything. You're saying this because you're jealous. No, I'm not jealous. I just don't want you to get carried away and regret it. Just because your love life's so far behind you, you can't remember what it even feels like to get carried away. I know exactly what it feels like to get carried away. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, sure you are. Why do you think I ended up having an affair, eh? You tell me that. What? You had an affair? Um, look, it's, it's over now. It was stupid. It was more in my head than anything else. You can't have had an affair. You're my mum. Oh, love, look, I was just trying to prove a point to you, love. It's nothing to get upset about. What about Dad? Does he know? No, of course he doesn't know. What good would telling him do, eh? Look, it, it's over and done with now. Just forget I said anything about it. Forget that my mum had an affair? It was nothing. But enough for you not to want Dad to know. Cheyenne, you told me a secret and I promised to keep it. I didn't promise you anything. Back in the cave, or what? Nothing. I was just wondering how well you and Mum knew each other when you got married. You know what I miss since I became middle class? Having the telly on when we were eating. <laughs> Me too. And deal with all the flossing and the side plates and shit. Did you know her that well? I knew her well enough to want to marry her. If I'd known her any better, clearly I wouldn't. <laughs> and do you think that you'd got to know her better over the years? Of course I did. What sort of question is that? Of course you did. What are you? Eh? The Liverpool Echo. Just ease off, Cheyenne, and eat your food, will you? I'm just interested in what's kept your marriage going for so long. That's all. Let's just drop it now. Do you want to say something? Ask Mum. Any idea what she's going on about? She's not worth it. I got engaged today. You did what? Steve and I got engaged to be married. You are joking. No. And you knew about this? And she told me this afternoon, yeah. What do you think of the ring? It's very shiny. I wanted him to take it back. I said he couldn't afford it, but... Well, he said he'd come into some money. Unexpectedly. Did he? Mike Hooley's fiance has told us that he used to hit her. Now, if he hit her, he wouldn't think twice about hitting that prostitute, Hayley. How does that get us closer to Ripley? It doesn't. 
It might have been the prostitute. It might have been Hooley's best man. Last week it might have been Danny Holden. Well, I'm trying to keep an open mind here, sir. On the one hand, there's keeping an open mind. On the other, there's being a feather for every wind that blows. I'll go and set up another interview with that prostitute. You do that, Blythe. You do that. What do you want, Danny? Nothing. Do you think Cheyenne's getting married to Steve because he got beat up? Maybe. Bruise and a broken nose will get you a long way with women. So you think she is? Maybe. <laughs> Steve's a wanker. Yeah, but at least he's not a drug dealer, eh? Carlisle got that wrong. I was just getting it for a friend. That's why you had to lie about not seeing Mike Hooley in the club, isn't it? Because you'd sold him some gear, hadn't you? That's why I'm lying through my teeth now, trying to get us out of this mess. So it's all my fault. Oh! Finally he gets there. Come on. I want to show you something. Take a look around you. Hey, is this what you want for yourself? This your ambition? Listen, Dad, I've got something to tell you. I was 16 years old. I'd run away from home. No roof over my head, hungry. I'd heard that perverts hung out at one of the arcades, you know, pay for rent boys and that. Now, I'm not proud to tell you, Danny, but I went down there. I was playing on one of the machines, and sure enough, this old bender came over. I was just about to go with him when you know what happened? No. I got three bars on a win line, ten quid, jackpot payout, the old Bar X machine. That's when I knew. I'd found me calling. I saw what I could do. Will you just listen? No more listening. It's always excuses with you. You're bloody useless. You're that far away from being a loser. Now take a look around you, because this is where you're going to end up if you don't shake yourself. I want you to stay here. Think about that. Let the kids think for themselves. I mean, that's all good in theory, but what if they're thinking something stupid, eh? What then? Where are you going with the machines? They're in need of emergency maintenance. Now, he doesn't want to play football anymore. No, he'd rather sell speed to idiot manx. And she's chucking away a good education by getting married to the living dead. That'll never last. You know when they're born, you think you'll never love anything this much again. And you're dead right, you don't. I think you're looking on the black side. Oh, thanks for sharing that insight with us, Tricia. Barry, take the rest of these outside and make sure that door looks like it's been burgled. I'm only saying... You're only saying shit. That's your trouble. You're always only saying. Got a trap like a groupie's chuff. What are you talking about? Carlisle dropped by, said he'd spoken to a taxi driver. So? So I'm thinking he's bound to get there in the end. And then I thought, how did he find out I'd taken a taxi in the first place? Well, there are records and stuff. Uh, uh, maybe the driver come forward. No chance. Bloke drove like an asylum seeker, Albanian speed limits. Don't think he wants to get too cosy with the police. You think I told Carlisle about the taxi? Hey, hang on, Jim. You're not saying that, are you, Ripley? No. I'm saying you told him about the taxi, you told him about the flat, you told him about the hookers. You told him about my lad. In fact, it's a miracle you're not on your phone now telling him about these bloody machines. I don't believe this. Why would I grass you up? Because wherever you are and whoever you're with, you want to make yourself look important, and I wasn't falling for it anymore. Not like you, then. No, because I am important. Hey, hang on, lads. This is getting out of hand. The times I've stood up for you oh. when your gaming licence was up for renewal. Oh, don't get sentimental on me, Jim. You'll have me filling up. Hey, let's just put it down to you being a prick.
Are you all right? Not really. What is it? Nothing. I've been in town with Dad. I walked home thinking about stuff and that, you know. You know, and sometimes there's like a, a gap in your head where the right word should be. Or you think of an idea in a dream. <laughs> you know it's a dream and you think, if I remember that, everything will be all right. And then you wake up and word's gone. Do you know what I mean? Danny, love, I just want to be left alone for a bit. Is that all right? Sure. So you think, well, if I can't rely on my family, at least I've got me mates. And then you find you can't even depend on them. Look, I don't think that's true about Jim. That all was going through. And that creosoted bastard was listening to me suffer. And he knew. He knew all along. But you've been too hard on him. You know this forgiving thing you do, Terry. You know forgiving your wife, forgiving me, forgiving Albright. I'm sure it's all very admirable, but it didn't half get on my tit. Well, we all do bad things, don't we? What's that supposed to mean? What about that slap? What slap? See, you've forgotten about it already. What, me and you, the other day? Oh, come on, that were nothing. Exactly. Well, I've been thinking about that. You don't slap another blow, not if you respect him, you don't. You punch him. And you slap me like I was a... like a little kid or a girl or something. So what, you would have preferred it ever giving you a good kicking? At least that I felt valued. Well, maybe I will give you a good kicking. Make you feel better about yourself. Maybe you will. Come here. Come on. Cheyenne will come to her senses. It's like you said, you know, she's digging her heels in because she thinks I've got something to do with beating him up. So? So, well, find out who did it, and then it'll be all right. He must love her a lot. He's bought her a ring. That means nothing. Did you see the diamonds in it? Must have cost him a bit. He can't afford that. Yeah, well, he's trying to buy her. That never works. <sighs> That's good coming from you. How come this is about me all of a sudden? All right, no need to get so defensive. You know, I, I'm trying to comfort you here. You say that like you're doing me a favour. Believe it or not, it's what most normal husbands do, as a matter of course. You know what? I'm not surprised she's marrying that prick. I think she looks at us and thinks she can't do any worse. Too long, but I make you feel mad. 
younger. I wish that I knew what I know now. When I was stronger. We could bring forensics down here to go through this room with a fine tooth comb. My bet is they could find evidence that Mike Cooley was in here. Well, that doesn't prove anything. He could have wandered in when I went to drum up some business. At four in the morning. My peak time. So he died, was moved to the bedsit opposite, and the following night he was moved to the arcade. And you expect us to believe that you didn't see or hear anything? We know he liked to beat up women. I wouldn't be the first. If you're lying, you're perverting the course of justice. And if there's any doubt that he was still alive when you moved him, it could be manslaughter. I didn't kill him. No, I don't think you did. But I think you moved the body, didn't you? I panicked. All right, he collapsed and I panicked. And was this before or after you supplied him with drugs? I sniffed a couple of poppers and I turned to get ready. I heard him fall and he was dead. I didn't know what to do, so I dragged him to an empty bed, sit over the hall. You dragged him there by yourself? I used to be a dominatrix in Burton on Trent. You never lose it. So why move him again to the arcade? It's the only place they had keys to. And I thought, you know, maybe it'd look more like an accident in there. You had keys to Ripley Holden's arcade? He keeps a spare set here for emergencies. The alarm code's on the fob. He trusts you with a spare set of keys. He trusts me with a lot of things. Why is any man dropped off in town at 3.45 in the morning? He's searching for a shag. Ripley drops in on Haley, but who's turned up at the same time? Mike Cooley, that bastard, has been annoying him all night. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Well, how about he put the word out that he wanted to nail Mike Cooley for scamming his arcade, and Haley rang him when he turned up? So why didn't you move the body to the arcade on the same night? Because it was too late, because Holworth begins his one-man protest at five in the morning. No, 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 Haley was scared out of her wits. Why? Because she killed Mike Hooley. He's gone there, started on her, she's hit him with a weapon in self-defence. She's scared, all right. She's scared of Ripley Holden. I'm sorry about being so mean to you. About, you know. I'm sorry I told you. No, I'm glad you did. Right. You're not going to leave, Dad, are you? No, love. And it is over? Yes. It's me and Danny who make you unhappy and we'll be leaving home soon. No, it isn't. It's not your fault, really, it's not. You know all the times you tried to talk to me and ask me about my feelings and all that? I ignored you and was sarcastic and stuff. It was like I knew I was doing it, but I couldn't stop. And then it was just something I did. Didn't mean I hated you. Is that copper? Is your husband then? No, he's at the arcade. He's had another break in. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, there's a big market for second hand gaming machines. People steal to order. Still, it's unlucky. What with the other break in? Mm. Well, he's going through an unlucky phase. We all are. Amen to that. So, shall I get him to give you a call? Yeah. If you could um, <clears throat> tell him I'd like to talk to him. Yeah, sure, OK. I can do that. Well, is there anything else? Because I was going out. That's it. OK. Take care.
it's not just the money, Ruth. It's the psychological damage. I know. Fear goes right past my brain and into my bowels. Barry, I'm going to need a 360-degree ceiling unit installed and let's apply to the police for instant bells. Now, nobody touch anything here until the insurance assessors have got here. Now, come on. Chop, chop. Got to keep moving forward. The thing is, my investment, my, my £2,000, me and Barry were noticing that maybe if you're doing insurance fiddles, it might be a good time to get our money out. No. It's the best time to buy. It's called a bear market. We feel a bit out of our depth, to be honest. I was thinking maybe a fixed-rate bond might give me a better return. Did he just say that, or are you throwing your voice? It's just, well, it's all I've got. And if... Well, if the casino hotel doesn't get built, I've lost my savings. And I was hoping to treat myself to an endoscopy this winter. So it's come to this, eh? My oldest trusted business partners want out. Well, not out, exactly. Just less in. Read the Bible, have you, Ruth? Yes. Parable of the talents mean anything to you? The slave that hid the talent in the ground. What return did he get on his investment, eh? He was cast out into the outer darkness where there will be a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. Oh, come on. This is your new idea. Remortgage my house. Shangri-La. <laughs> no way. No bloody way. I'm not risking that. What's wrong with remortgaging the arcade? <laughs> the bank won't let you. They think you've already borrowed too much against projected future earnings. Well, go out and find some new investors to tide us over. <laughs> with respect, Ripley, if Ruth and Def Barry are starting to have doubts, and it won't be long before your big investors are wanting their money out, too. Well, I'll get planning permission in the next six weeks. Nobody believes that except you. Well, I've been here before. The only one that believes in me. Do you think that scares me? Hey, no, it gives me an hard on. At least let me look into what you could raise on the house. It's everything I've ever worked for. I'm not asking you to sell it. You find another way, pencil dick, or you can just walk out of here sacked. Come on, Ripley. No need to take that sort of tone. Go on, go out there and look again. Or you can find some other sucker to buy your shags for you.
Danny. What are you doing? Come here. What are you doing? You don't do this. This isn't down for you, son. Come on. Why this? Because it's what you did. Jesus. Because I did it. Who told you I did it? Cheyenne. Did she? If you're as unhappy as I was, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. And not you. Not my son. It just seemed like the right thing to do. What is this? At school, a girl? What? It's not a girl. What's funny about that? It's like you said. I'm useless. Oh, I didn't mean that. No, I just... I just said that to shake you up a bit. You're topping yourself. Wasn't there anyone you could talk to? Hey, come on, a mate, anybody. I rang the Samaritans. Oh, well, they clearly did a first-class job, didn't they? Mum answered. I recognised her voice. All the luck, eh? Come on. Let's get you all. I beat up Steve. Don't you think I guess that's already? I knew it had to be you. I were only trying to help, then you got the blame. No, that doesn't matter. There's nothing that you can do that's so bad that we can't sort it out. Nothing. I moved the body, Dad. You what? I moved my coolie from your flats to the arcade. You did? Ailey rang me on my mobile. How do you know Ailey? She were panicking because he collapsed at her flat. And he looked dead and she knew you'd get in the shit if he were found there. What, so you think you'd move him to the arcade? for safekeeping. I was going to move him early next morning. And that copper knows that. He looks at me and he knows. And he's going to get the forensics and he's going to say I murdered him when I didn't. No, he's not. I just couldn't see a way out. I'm useless. You know, when I lay down on those railway tracks, I look back now and I think, what was that all about? I would have missed so much. No, it's like walking out before the end of a film. What if you don't like the film? Well, at least hang around, see as it turns out. Odds on, it's going to get better. Unless you grants in it, in which case you probably are better off topping yourself. <laughs> don't you know how much what I'm saying is? Tear me apart if you came to any harm. Kill me too. Do you understand me? Yeah. Any problem? Any time things are getting too much for you, come to me, understood? This body business at Carlisle, I'll find a way out for you. Don't you worry about it a minute longer. How? I'll sort it, Danny. I promise you. I just dragged my lad off the railway tracks. He was trying to top himself because of what you're putting him through. Danny? Yes, Danny. My lad. Scared out of his wits because he thinks you're going to arrest him. I'm sorry he's taking it so badly. What will it take, Carlisle? What will it take for you to stop hounding the lad? I'm doing my job. You know bloody well Danny didn't do it. Maybe he didn't, but in the absence of any better suspect, I'm duty bound to carry on building a case against him. If you're going to pick on someone, pick on me. Is that you telling me I have reason to suspect you? If you like, yeah, why not? So what are you admitting to? What? I can't just suspect you because you've told me to. What exactly are you admitting to? I 
I move Mike Hooley's body to the arcade. There, you happy now? You moved the body? Correct. Why? Because I didn't want the planning people thinking that my future casino hotel was being used as a part-time brothel. Well, let's get you down to the station, get your statement and get you charged. Well, you're making this official. I thought this was off the record. You're man to man. You've just come here and confessed to a very serious crime. Now, why would I want to keep that off the record?